So which brand makes the best down jackets? I asked you guys on my Instagram, what is your favorite down jacket brand? And I tallied up all your responses and I came up with the top five most popular down jacket brands according to you guys. So I spent over $3,000 buying one of these jackets so you don't have to. I have a jacket that costs as much as $1,500 and a jacket that costs as low as $200. To make this more of a one-to-one -one comparison, here are my criteria for the jackets in this video. The jacket must have a fur trim and also it must be a parka style jacket. So in this video, I'm going to be rating each of the top five down jackets out of 10 based on its functionality, its fit, and overall value. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys what I think is the best down jacket in the market today. So keep watching. Starting off with the fifth most popular down jacket according to you guys, and that is North Face. Fun fact, if you ever wonder why the North Face logo looks like this, it's because it's inspired by the Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. Beautiful national park I highly recommend you guys visit if you haven't already. The North Face Bedford Jacket is their entry level down jacket. It's super affordable, but will that affordability sacrifice on quality? Let's find out. The North Face Bedford Jacket retails for $290. It weighs 1440 grams. The colorway is Time, and I got this in a size small. Let's start off with the material. The outer shell is made from 100% ripstop nylon, and the inner is also made from 100% ripstop nylon. In case you don't know, ripstop fabric is constructed so it prevents ripping and tearing, and that is done by nylon fibers being tightly knitted together. The fur is synthetic, it's made from 70% acrylic, 13% model acrylic, and 17% polyester. These are very common materials that you find in wigs. The lining on the chest, hood, and sleeves are 100% polyester. For the Insulation, this is a true down jacket made from 75% down and 25% waterfowl feathers. It has a fill power of 550. For features, the jacket is very basic. The jacket only has a total of three pockets, two pockets at the belly that's secured through Velcro and also a zipper. You would think this pocket goes deep, but it doesn't. It stops about six inches from the hem of the jacket, so don't expect to carry a lot of things in this. The inside of the pocket doesn't have any kind of extra lining for hand warming. Usually winter jackets have side pockets for your hands to easily slip in, but the North Face doesn't have any side pockets. The third pocket is up at the chest is a shallow pocket that you can store your phone and wallet. There are no pockets in the interior, so if you're planning to carry a lot of items in this jacket, then this jacket is not for you. At the waist, there are no post strings to adjust the waist opening, which is not ideal if you don't want wind to sneak up your jacket. At the sleeves, this jacket does not have ripped cuffs, but it has Velcro that you can adjust to get a tight fit so cold wind doesn't blow up your sleeves. For the zippers, this is plastic YKK zippers. This does have two-way zip, which is a huge plus. Out of all five jackets, the zipper on this is a easiest to slide up and down. It feels like there's zero friction, which is impressive. Moving on to the jacket, the fur is removable, but the hood is not. At the collar, it does have this strip of soft polyester since your mouth is going to be right up against it when zip all the way. There's a drawstring at the back of the hood where you can adjust to get a more snug fit. Out of 10, what would I rate the functionality of this jacket? I'll give it a 5. Besides the two-way zipper, there isn't much I like from this jacket. There are only three pockets and it's all shallow. No rib cuffs, no waist adjusters, no hand warmers. This is a very simple jacket that doesn't really bring any anything special to the table. Now my biggest pet peeve when it comes to winter jackets is if it makes a lot of noise. For example, swinging your arms or moving your body. Will this jacket make a lot of noise? Let's find out. The North Face Bedford jacket reaches a peak amplitude of negative 16 decibels, which makes this the third noisiest jacket out of all five. Moving on to the fit, starting with some dimensions, shoulder to shoulder measures to 20 inches, chest length or pit to pit measures to 22 and a half inches, sleeve lengths are 25 inches, and length is 33 inches. Here's how the jacket looks on me. Before we get into it, I'm 5'10", 160 pounds with 36 inch chest, and a size small is my true to size. First impression, this jacket is very lightweight. At 1440 grams, this is the second lightest jacket out of all five. There's not much stiffness in this jacket, it looks puffy but doesn't limit any of your movements so this may be a good choice if you're going skiing or snowboarding. Because of the puffiness, you can see how my shoulder and arms look bigger than it actually is. The plus side to puffy jackets is that it's really comfortable. It feels like fluffy cushions are against my body which makes this jacket so warm and cozy. Lengthwise, the jacket is very long. At 33 inches, this is the longest jacket out of all five. It goes well past my butt and crotch and stops at my thigh. The 20 inch shoulder width and 22 and a half inch chest width is very wide but it does make me look buffer than I actually am so no complaints. With the hood on you can see that the collar stops right before the tip of your nose. The fur trim does protrude outwards which is a must because that will prevent the fur from getting right up against your face and mouth. 
Overall, this jacket fits wide and long, but I still recommend going true to sides. It's a very comfortable jacket and the lightness makes this jacket special. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it a 7. For the value of this jacket, I'll give it a 10. It does lack a lot of functionality like extra pockets, hand warmers, and two-way zip, but for the price, I can't really complain. I got this jacket for $290, but it's currently on sale for $173, and that is an amazing deal. That brings a total score for the North Face Bedford jacket, 22 out of 30. Let's see if the next jacket is any better. The fourth most popular down jacket brand according to you guys, and that is Heli Hansen. Heli Hansen is a Norwegian brand that started in the 1870s making waterproof clothing for sailors. Over the years, they mastered their waterproofing technology called the Heli Tech that is water resistant, wind resistant, and also breathable. They made their first winter parka jacket with this Heli Tech called the Swalbird. Let's see if this jacket's any good. The Heli Hansen Swalbird jacket retails for $300. It weighs 1220 grams. The colorway is called 162 red, and I got this in a size small. Let's start off with the material of this jacket. The outer is made from 100% nylon and the interior is made from 100% nylon. The fur is fake, it's made from a blend of 85% acrylic and 15% polyester. This is synthetic insulation made from 100% polyester. It uses Primoloft, which is a brand of insulation. It has an equivalent of 550 fill power. The insulation distribution is not even. There's more insulation in the body at 133 grams per meter and less in the sleeves at 100 grams per meter. Everything in this jacket is synthetic, which is perfect for you animal lovers. Now, Let's talk about the features of this jacket starting with the pockets since I love pockets. The jacket has a total of 6 pockets plus a pouch. There's 5 pockets on the exterior, there's 2 huge pockets at the front that's fastened by 2 buttons, there's also these 2 side pockets for your hands, it has a polyester lining for extra warmth. Moving on to the chest, you have a mini shallow pocket. You can't really fit much in here besides your phone or wallet. There's one mini pocket that's tucked away behind this flap. It looks small, but in reality, this pocket is deeper than this pocket. Moving to the interior, there's no pockets in here besides the right side. There's this huge open pouch that you can fit a lot of stuff in here. At the left sleeve, you have the Heli Hansen patch. It's made from rubber, but the HH logo is made from aluminum. At the end of the sleeves, the jacket has a reflective patch, mostly for cars to be able to see you if you're trekking in the middle of the night. The cool thing is that you can fold this down to hide the reflective strip during the daytime. The Heli Hansen logo of the chest is also reflective. The zipper is a plastic YKK zipper, and this is only a one-way zip, which is one thing I don't like about this jacket. There are drawstrings at the side of the hood and also the back of the hood where you can adjust for a more tight fit. The waist also has drawstrings for more snug fit and to keep the wind from sneaking up your belly. At the sleeves, there are knitted cuffs which are soft and comfortable. It's a good feature to prevent wind from blowing up your sleeves. Now time to give this jacket a rating. Out of 10, what would I rate the functionality of this jacket? I'll give it a 9. There are plenty of big pockets, there's knitted cuffs, adjusters for your waist, collar, and hood. The reflective strip at the sleeves is a nice touch. If this jacket had a two-way zip, then it would have been perfect, but still this jacket has a lot to offer. Now let's do a noise test. The Swalbird jacket reaches a peak amplitude of negative 14.7 decibels, which makes this the second noisiest jacket out of all five. Moving on to the fit, shoulder to shoulder measures to 18 inches, chest length or pit to pit measures to 23 inches, sleeve lengths are 25 inches, front length is 30 inches, and back length is 32 inches. Here's how the jacket looks on me. This is a size small and it does fit true to size. First impression, this jacket has a very slim silhouette that won't make you feel like a marshmallow. Honestly, with their Helitech fabric, this feels more like a raincoat than a winter jacket. It does keep you warm, but I'm a little skeptical on how warm this is because of how thin the jacket is. The jacket is very lightweight, weighing in at 1220 grams, which makes this the lightest jacket out of all five and is not even close. At 31 inches, the front length is just long enough to cover my crotch. At the back, it has a very pronounced tail drop at 33 inches, which is 2 inches longer than the front length. This will keep my butt nice and toasty. This is a slim fitting jacket, but with a 23 inch chest opening, there's still room to layer in case this jacket isn't warm enough. At 25 inches, the sleeve length is ideal, hitting right at my wrist. The sleeve openings are very wide, but it's not an issue because of the rib cuffs. With the hood on, the collar does provide coverage for your chin, but leaves the mouth exposed. The fur trim does get in your face a bit, but it doesn't get in your mouth like the Alpha Industries jacket, which is a huge plus. Overall, this jacket is very light and slim. It's a decent jacket for urban environments, but don't count on it if you live in extreme cold climates. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it an 8. 
For the values jacket, I'll also give it an 8. This jacket has plenty of features that makes this a great entry level winter jacket. However, I'm skeptical about the warmth, which is the most important part of a winter jacket. That brings a total score for the Heli Hansen Swabber jacket 25 out of 30, which makes it the highest rated jacket so far. Let's see if the next jacket can top this. Just one quick message before we continue on with this video. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps out small content creators like myself and it really encourages me to keep putting out videos like this. So drop a like, subscribe, and let's continue on with the video. The third most popular down jacket brand according to you guys, and that is Alpha Industries. Alpha Industries started off as a clothing contractor for the US military. The N3B jacket became the official jacket for US Air Force pilots, and these jackets were made to handle temperatures as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Fast forward to today, Alpha Industry no longer supplies clothing for the US military. But the overall look and design of this jacket hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is the material of this jacket. Alpha Industry no longer uses real down feathers or fur in their jacket. Everything in this jacket Jacket is now synthetic. With that said, let's see if this jacket is still any good. The Alpha Industries N3B jacket retails for $225. It weighs 1560 grams. The colorway is replica blue, and I got this in a size small. Let's start off with the material. The outer shell is made from 100% nylon. The fabric has a shine to it, which in my opinion makes the jacket look cheap, even though this is not a cheap jacket. It really depends on your taste, but I prefer a more subtle look. The lining is also 100% nylon. The insulation is 100% polyester, so it's not as warm as down feather and also doesn't last as long. With more wears, polyester tends to become flatter and flatter because synthetic fiber doesn't retain its shape very well. Moving up to the hood, the fur trim is made from a blend of polyester and acrylic. Something I've never seen before is a whole entire hood is lined with fur, not just the trim. The fur is very soft, so your head will feel very warm and cozy. Let's talk about the features now. The N3B kept a lot of its original branding. You see the tag lists out the official US defense contractor cage code mil spec. Another tag down here lists out the mil spec again, the official stock number, and contract number. The jacket has a total of six pockets, two at the belly, two at the chest, one on the left sleeves, and one interior. The belly pockets are fastened through a single button. The inside pocket has a polyester lining for extra warmth for your hands. Moving up to the chest, you have a slanted pocket that has two buttons. This jacket also has a polyester lining. At the left sleeves you have this mini zip pocket and four pouches for four pens. An interesting thing to note is that at the bottom of the pouch there's a pen cap inside. In case your pen doesn't have a cap, you don't have to worry about the ink spilling your pouch which is a nice touch. Of course you have the Alpha Industry signature removed before a flight tag. In the left interior side you have this open pocket. On the sleeves it has rib cuffing to protect against wind slipping through your sleeves. The rib cuffing is a lot thinner and more flimsy than the other jackets but it does its job. The sleeves has an elbow patch for added durability. The zipper is not YKK zipper, it's their own Alpha Industry made zipper. And let me tell you, the zipper sucks. It's not smooth and if you zip too fast, metal shavings will come off. It's almost impossible to zip this jacket all the way up. I tried for 10 minutes and I just gave up. I'd rather just use the buttons to close this jacket. Moving to the interior of this jacket, of course it has your signature bright orange lining that you'll find in every single one of their jackets. The jacket doesn't have have any waist adjusters but it does have these two post strings that you can pull and tighten the jacket around your belly. There's no core locks to lock in the position of the post strings. I don't see why they left this off. Looks like they're just cutting corners. Moving up to the hood, there are two post strings to tighten the hood. The hood is not removable but you can unbutton to remove the fur. At the back of the hood you have this buckle and strap that you can pull to tighten the hood even more. The buckle is a thin plastic and it feels very cheap. I feel like this can crack very easily. Out of 10, what would I rate the functionality to this jacket? I'll give it a 7. Overall this jacket is very simple, there's nothing really that pops out that makes this jacket stand out. At the end of the day, it has everything you need from a jacket. Now let's do a sound test. The N3B jacket reaches a peak amplitude of negative 20.2 decibels, which makes it the second quietest jacket out of all five. Moving on to the fit, shoulder to shoulder measures to 18 inches, chest length or pit to pit measures to 22 inches, sleeve lengths are 25 inches, and the length is 31 inches. Here's how the jacket looks on me. This is a size small and does fit true to size. First impression, this is a great looking winter coat. It's not very puffy like the North Face that we just saw. You can see the bright orange lining in the interior that gives this navy jacket a pop of color. The red removed before or flight tag also blends well with the jacket. The nylon shell has a bit of sheen on it, but surprisingly it doesn't look too noticeable with the navy colorway. 
The jacket is medium weight, weighing in at 1560 grams. This makes it the third heaviest jacket out of all five. Surprisingly, it's a very flimsy jacket. There's barely any stiffness in the material. Length by the 31 inches is not overly long. This is the perfect length for my height. The jacket covers my butt completely, but doesn't go past it. It'll keep my butt and crotch nice and toasty. With an 18 inch shoulder opening and 22 inch chest opening, it's slim, but does give you room to layer underneath in case the jacket is not warm enough. The 25 inch sleeve length is ideal. You can see that it stops right at my wrist. Like I mentioned before, I really hate the zipper on this jacket. It's almost impossible to zip this jacket all the way up. It's not a good quality zipper and lack of rigidity in this jacket shell doesn't help at all. When you finally manage to do zip up, you can see why this jacket is called the snorkel parka. The hood extends well past your face so the cold winds and snow have no way of getting in. The fur trim is annoying because although it does extrude outwards, the fur trim does get all over my face, nose, and mouth. And let me tell you, having a mouth full of synthetic fur while constantly feeling like you're about to sneeze is not fun. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it an 8. For the value of this jacket, I'll give it a 6. For $225, this is the lowest price parka jacket out of all 5, but it does make some obvious sacrifices on quality. Most noticeably, the hardware in this jacket is very bad. The zipper is awful, lack of core locks for the pull strings, and the buckle on the back of the hood looks like it'll snap in a second. That brings the total score for the Alpha Industries N3B jacket, 21 out of 30. Let's see if the next jacket is any better. The second most popular down jacket brand according to you guys, and that is Moose Knuckle. Just a warning, don't go Google image search Moose Knuckle or do if you're into that kind of thing. But anyways, Moose Knuckle is a Canadian luxury brand that rivals other brands like Montclair and Canada Goose. This jacket is not cheap at all. Now let's go find out if Moose Knuckle is worth is steep price tag. The Moose Knuckle 3Q jacket retails for $1,095. It weighs 1,905 grams. The colorway is army, and I got this in a size small. Let's start off with the material of this jacket. The shell is made from 74% cotton and 26% nylon. The lining is 100% nylon. For the insulation, this is made from 80% down and 20% waterfowl feathers. It has a fill power of 650. The jacket is rated at level 4 Canada code, which makes this the warmest jacket that Moose Knuckle has to offer. It's built to handle the extreme cold weather of Canada. Canada. The insulation on this jacket is so squishy, it feels like I'm grabbing someone's ass. It's very fluffy and I can literally use this jacket as a pillow. Moving up to the hood, the fur is a mix of arctic blue fox and silver fox fur imported from Finland, which sounds exotic as hell, not gonna lie. One thing I don't like about real fur is that it sheds a lot. After a day of wearing, you have the fur all over your head and shoulders, but it feels so soft and luxurious, I can honestly pet it all day. Moving on to the features, this jacket has a total of 6 pockets. There are 2 pockets in the belly and it's fastened with one button. The inside of the belly pockets has a thick cotton lining and the heat from your body actually radiates to this lining so when you stick your hand in it'll feel so warm and cozy. Moving up to the chest there's a vertical zip pocket and also has that warm lining. This is a shallow pocket that's mostly just for your phone or wallet. On the right sleeve there's another small zip pocket. This one doesn't have lining and is very shallow. You can't fit your phone or wallet in here. Moving to the interior there are two pockets. On the left side you have a small zip pouch. On the right side you have a hidden zip pocket that can surprisingly fit a lot of items. Now to my favorite part of the jacket you have this huge moose knuckle graphic of a canadian hockey player punching an american in the face i'm american by the way but i just thought this graphic is so funny i was cracking up when i saw this there's so many little designs on this jacket that makes it stand out from the rest the buttons are metal and it's threaded through this black strip another cool feature is a super thick ykk zipper the axe shaped zipper is a very unique design there's also zippers at the sleeves where you can adjust for a more loose or snug fit the sleeves have knitted cuffs and check this out it's not just knitted cuffs there's a whole nylon layer before the cuffs that's about the length of half your forearm, which is very impressive. At the waist, they have these two zippers. So if you're doing something where you're moving a lot, like skiing, you want to zip this all the way up so your movement isn't restricted by the jacket. But if you're not doing anything, just zip it down for a more snug fit around your waist. Moving up to the sleeves, you have the signature moose knuckle patch that's riveted. The logo is made from super thick and sturdy aluminum. You'll probably break your hand if you punch this. Moving up to the hood, another thing I've never seen before is this metal collar adjuster. Usually it's made from plastic, but this is metal, which is super fancy. The fur is not removable, but the hood is. At the back of the hood, you have two D rings to tie in the hood. If you ever put on a motorcycle helmet before, then this is very similar. Thread it through both D rings and come back and thread it through the bottom ring only. Tie in and then lock it in through the keeper loop. So out of 10, what would I break the functionality of this jacket? I'll give it a perfect score of a 10. I would prefer a two-way zipper and bigger pockets, but there's so many unique features on this jacket that makes up for it and makes it one of the most practical jackets on the market today. Now let's do a noise test.
the 3Q jacket reaches a very impressive peak amplitude of negative 20.9 decibels, which makes this the quietest jacket out of all five. Moving on to the fit, shoulder to shoulder measures to 17 inches, chest length or pit to pit measures to 21 inches, sleeve lengths are 26 and a half inches, front length is 29 inches, and back length is 31 inches. Here's how the jacket looks on me. This is a size small and does fit true to size. First impression, the silver hardware in this jacket stands out a lot. Maybe a little bit too much in my opinion, but at the same time, it does show that this is a quality jacket. The white trim also stands out a lot and makes you look like a baller. People see you wear this jacket and they know that you don't mess around when it comes to winter time. The jacket is heavyweight at 1905 grams. This makes it the second heaviest jacket out of all five. Because of how much insulation is in this jacket plus the cotton on the shell, the jacket does feel a bit stiff. With a 17 inch shoulder opening and 21 inch chest opening, this makes it the slimmest jacket out of all five. The 26 and a half inch sleeve length is the longest out of all five jackets, but because of how fluffy the arms are, the sleeves stop shorter than its actual length. The front length of this jacket doesn't feel like a parka style jacket. At 29 inches, the length stops right at mid crotch. The 31 inch drop tail in this jacket does do a good job at keeping my butt nice and toasty. With the hood up, you can see that the collar is just long enough to cover up your chin. Your face is exposed, but the super fluffy fur trim does do a great job at keeping the wind and snow out of your face. Out of all five, the fur trim on this is the most luscious, soft, the most amazing thing I've ever felt and I'm not even exaggerating. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it a 9. For the value of this jacket, I'll give it an 8. There's so many unique features and designs on this jacket that makes it one of a kind. At $1,100, this jacket is far from cheap, but the construction, quality, fit, and warmth, the jacket in my opinion is worth its steep price tag. That brings the total score for the Moose Knuckle 3Q jacket, 27 out of 30, which makes it the highest rated jacket so far. We have one final jacket to go over and let's see if that one can beat Moose Knuckle. And the number one most popular down jacket brand according to you guys, and that is, drumroll please, Canada Goose. It seems like everyone owns a Canada Goose jacket because you've seen this jacket worn almost everywhere during the winter time. It is one of the most expensive down jacket brands in the market today, but let's go find out, is Canada Goose the real deal or is it just a status symbol? The Canada Goose Expedition jacket retails for $1,495. It weighs 2,023 grams. The colorway is military green, and I got this in a size small. Let's start off with the material. The shell is made from 85% polyester and 15% cotton. Canada Goose calls it their Arctic Tech shell, which is their warmest material. On a scale of 1 to 5 in the Thermal Experience Index, this jacket is a 5, which means it can handle temperatures negative 30 Celsius and below. No surprises there because this is the official jacket for scientists in the McMurdo Station in Antarctica, so if you're an average person who's planning to just use this during the winter in a city environment, then this jacket is more than enough. The lining is 100% nylon, the padding is 100% polyester, the insulation is a white duck, 80% down and 20% feather. This has a fill power of 625. The hood is genuine coyote fur, it doesn't feel as fluffy and soft as the fox fur from the moose knuckle jacket. I actually thought this was synthetic fur for a second, the good thing is that this fur doesn't shed as easily as the moose knuckle. Moving on to the features, this jacket has a total of 11 pockets, which makes this by far the most out of all 5 jackets. At the belly, you have these two huge pockets pockets that's fastened with velcro. At the sides you have a zipper opening. The awesome thing about these pockets is that both has insulation lining. This pouch has a lining on the front side only but on the zip pocket there's an insulation lining on both the front and back side. Moving up to the chest you have these two large pockets. There's no insulation in these pockets because you don't put your hands in. But in the side zip pockets there's two separate pouches in one pocket. The front pouch doesn't have any lining and the back pouch has both front and back insulation lining. The cool thing is that this pouch falls the direction of your hand placement so it's very ergonomical and super comfortable probably the most thoughtful design from a winter jacket that i've ever seen on the right arm you have this skinny but long pocket and on the left arm you have these two pouches for your pens let's move to the interior the two pockets are located on your left side you have a side zip pocket right here and an open pouch down here a cool feature on this jacket is this nylon belt that it's used to hug around your waist this is mostly for blocking wind from entering underneath you they also added these post strings that you can adjust the tightness with this jacket around your lower midsection, the string runs along the entire jacket. So with the pole strings tied all the way plus the nylon waist belt, this jacket
jacket will help you tighter than your dad coming back from getting milk from the grocery store. The jacket has a thick two-way YKK zipper. One thing to note is that the zipper is on the left side, so for us right-handed people, it might take some time to get used to. There's no buttons on this jacket. It has six three and a half inch long Velcro strips. For the sleeves, the opening is huge. It measures to seven inches wide, but this jacket does have rib knit cuffs that makes you forget about the wide sleeve openings. It's very comfortable and locks in heat so wind doesn't slip through your arms. Moving up, you have a fuzzy fleece lined chin guard for added warmth and comfort. The hood is huge. It will provide a lot of coverage. There's pull strings on the side so you can adjust the tightness of the collar or hood. The fur is removable through the zipper. Another cool feature in this jacket is this wire reinforcement at the tip of the hood. This is something you find in a bra but I've never seen on clothing before. This wire is used to shape the hood. It's bendable and you can adjust the hood shape to your liking and because it's a metal wire, it will hold its shape through the harshest winds and blizzards. On the back side, you have this heavyweight nylon webbing to hang your jacket from. So out of 10, what would I rate the functionality of this jacket? I'll give it a 10. This jacket has everything you need from a winter jacket and more. Now let's do a noise test. The Expedition jacket reaches a peak amplitude of negative 14.5 decibels, which makes this the loudest jacket out of all five. Moving on to the fit, shoulder to shoulder measures 21 inches, chest length or pit to pit measures 24 and a half inches, sleeve lengths are 25 inches, and body length is 33 inches. Here's how the jacket looks on me. This is a size small and it fits big. I would recommend going down a size. First impression, this jacket is huge. The 21 inch shoulder opening and 24 and a half chest opening is by far the largest out of all five jackets. You look like you're about to head to the North Pole to visit Santa with this on. The arm opening is seven inches, which is the same as the leg opening of a pair of Levi's 511 jeans. Imagine having the same opening as jeans for your sleeves. That shows how wide these sleeves are. The 33 inch length on this jacket is tied for the longest jacket out of all five. You can see how it goes well past my butt and crotch zone. It covers up to half my thighs. The jacket is heavyweight, weighing in at 2,023 grams, which makes this the heaviest jacket by far. With the hood on, this is perfect if you want to scare kids at your local park. Total anonymity. You can also press the hood together to look like one of those monsters from Stranger Things and scare kids even more. All jokes aside, the hood on this jacket by far does the best job at keeping the wind and snow out of your face. The hood protrudes about 6 inches away from your face, which is pretty damn impressive. You also don't have to worry about the fur trim getting all in your face. Style-wise, the jacket is not very attractive attractive. It's big, it's bulky, it just doesn't look good. Most brands try to make an effort to add some elements to make the appearance look better, but the Expedition jacket is a no BS type of down jacket. It's all about keeping you warm and dry, and that's it. Doesn't care about how you look. Overall, this is by far the warmest and most functional jacket out of all five. Now, time just gives jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it a six. For the value of this jacket, I'll give it an eight. At $1,500, that is an insanely high price for a down jacket. It does have a lot of great features that you won't find from other brands and this is by far the warmest jacket in the market today. The quality and construction is amazing and I won't be surprised if this jacket lasts you for the rest of your life. That brings the total score for the Canada Goose Expedition Jacket 24 out of 30. To summarize, this is the ranking of the down jackets from quietest to noisiest with Moose Knuckle at the top of the list and Canada Goose at the very bottom. Tying up the final scores, this is how I would rank the five down jackets with Moose Knuckle at the top of my list and Alpha Industries at the bottom. And that's it for this week's video. Let me know in the comments below what albums I should do next. I do read every single one of your comments, so leave your suggestions below. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.